Ball's coming from there and I'm starting here. I'm giving you that space. Before we went to South Africa, friendly challenged us and said, if we get two wins here, we're, we're nearly set up for the season and puts us in a brilliant place. We love anything to do with the hospitals. You know, you make a difference to people's lives in a way like... We put a lot of investment in sporting facilities in other cities in recent years. And I think it's long overdue that we have a similar investment uh, in this city uh, and for this province as well. There we go, much better, keep it going! Go! Tried to tackle pretty, someone pretty big, unfortunately dislocated my shoulder. Jack Carty is probably the biggest success story of all. and He comes in halfway through the Six Nations and he's got a realistic shot of making it to the World Cup. If we're in the top six, we're in the playoffs. If we're in the playoffs, all better off. Connacht on three, one, two, three, Connacht! Connacht Rugby was born from six clubs within its five counties. Over its 134 year history, it has grown into one of the major names in European rugby. From humble beginnings during the amateur era and fighting for its very existence to prospering in both domestic and European competitions. Connacht Rugby today is a force to be reckoned with and this is the story of its grassroots to green shirts. In 2002, 2003 then a lot of uncertainty came about. Um, the provincial game and especially it was focused on Connacht. I think there's a lot of changes going on in um, in England and in uh, Wales and Scotland as well, they were trying to really find the best way to make professional rugby last. Um, and whether that was through downsizing of the amount of teams, um, reconfigurating the leagues, there was a lot of uncertainty and, and especially here at Connacht, um, it probably wasn't until there was a, a players meeting called where uh, Eric Elwood and Dan McFarland spoke very passionately about um, Connacht's right to be a professional team, Connacht's right to be considered one of, of four equal teams um, across Ireland and uh, what the plans were at that stage to disband in Connacht and only go with three professional teams in, in, in Ireland. And I think as a young player, I couldn't comp comprehend it. I was kind of going, well, what do you mean they can get rid of us? They can't just get rid of us. We're one of four teams. We've always been here. Like we'll, we'll continue to have a team, surely. Professional rugby in Ireland at that stage was in its infancy and, and um, you know, all the province was, were, were probably trying to sort of find their way a bit. Um, and I think, you know, Connacht, we, we, we didn't have a huge amount uh, at, at, the, at that time. We had, you know, a great bunch of people who were really prepared to roll their sleeves up and, and, um, and try and provide as much as, as what they could for, for Connacht. And, um, but in, in, in those times, it was, um, rugby wasn't what, what it is today. One of the things we tried to do was very quickly get rid of that idea that we were victims, you know. Um, like, I hate the term disadvantage. Yeah, we have challenges that others may not have. Others will have challenges that we don't have. So there are plenty of strengths that we have. And what we wanted to do was take a lot of that um, historic stuff and just shed it, get rid of it. Um, and still don't forget where we came from. Connacht Rugby built and grew. In 2016, they won the Guinness Pro 12 in emphatic fashion, but have struggled to reach the same height since. 2018 brought in a new season, a new head coach and refreshed ambitions. Now then, we're really delighted to welcome our next guest to the show. He's going to be a big part of the rugby landscape in this part of the world over the next while. Andy Friend, the new Connacht coach, is on the line. Andy, you're very welcome. How did all this come about? Uh, it was a few months ago now. It was probably three or four months ago now. I um, received a phone call to say that uh, Connacht were in the market for a coach and if I had an interest, uh, uh, they'd like me to apply for that, which I did. And I uh, was very grateful and honoured to get the position and have been here and have loved every minute since we've been here. Friend seems to be the antithesis to Kieran Keane. So he, he, you know, he came in having coached at the Brumbies, having done the Australian Sevens. Um, again, not a hugely high-profile coach, but again, you know, if you look at Johan van Graan, even Joe Schmidt before he came, that wasn't that's never been a big issue in Irish rugby. I had hadn't heard much at all. All I heard was kind of the talk, oh, the Sevens coach is coming in. So I didn't really know what to make. Um, but I suppose when he got here, he kind of set down his mark quick enough, and we knew all about him straight away. That, you know, we've got some foreigners here, myself included, who, um, you know, unless you come out to these these other other clubs within the west of Ireland, you're not you're not 100% uh, sure of who you are representing. So to come out here and to see the passion, the energy out here is really really important. He's very direct with his feedback to the players and to the staff. So if there is things that need to be worked on, he, he has no problem telling people. But he he does it in a way where it's um, 
it comes across that, you know, listen, this is for your own good or whatever, he's honest and, and um, you know, a lot of players and staff, it's all, all they want is, you know, good, direct, honest feedback. You know, it's always a tough time of the season, the pre-season, it's, um, you're coming in and you're supposed to right away putting your, your body to the limit in terms of, um, you know, the conditioning work that you put in. So I suppose the first week was mainly just a lot of that kind of in the gym and out doing fitness things on the pitch. We have the, the Connacht way, you know, our set of values, our ambition, belief and community. and. The, the big part of the, the community side of things is um, obviously learning from it and giving back to it as much as we can. So coming up here, seeing the history of this club, obviously, you know, Willie, Tim, having spent some time up here as well, it's, it's important for us to get up here and, um, and understand, you know, where this place is, what it's about. Successful first year is that uh, we get out there and we play a, a brand that we're really proud of playing. Um, will it bring winning rugby? That's our, our hope and our desire. We're too wide because our sea defender's marking the outside shoulder like about, Dan is marking about two foot outside him, which means the next player's getting his spacing off that. As soon as they run under zone, we're f Well, you could see from the off that Fran was approaching things differently. They built those first kind of couple of weeks into this month of champions that they were playing against the, the, the previous winners, as previous winners themselves, that they had home games, that they could, you know, could build a bit of a, a momentum into the season. And while it didn't kick off uh, perfectly against Glasgow at home, um, that was a it was a cracking game. It was a close game, and they showed that they had the metal to put it up to a team who've gone on to be one of the strongest teams and you know top in the conference. Um, I think it's probably they're probably a small bit disappointed, but you know, in the years gone by, you'd have taken it in a heartbeat. And it was quite clear early on the players were, were buying into those uh, the methods the friend had that they were scoring tries they were creating things that their back three which was so electric in the league winning year was um, was firing on all cylinders but there was still room to you know room for growth. Friend just spelled out what he wanted and what he saw his, his game plan addition. He, he spelled out physically what he felt he wanted his players to look like and you can have that honest conversation back well I feel this guy can meet this guy this guy maybe not at this stage but we can get him up to that and it's important to have everybody on board because it is like in this game it is a team effort because you can get wiped out with injuries and collisions as a collision sport and you need the next guy coming in but if he hasn't been preparing all the time he's just going to fall short. Remember this week we're competing for this space out here in this open side 15 meter channel and our movement out here, up and out, really good ball awareness. And we win that space and win that collision in this open side. This is where play started. This is where we launched to. This is where we hunted to. Both are aggressive systems, but we've nailed the detail on that. If we win the battle for this space, this weekend we win the game. And the launch and the hunt is our source to do that. And the other man is too far That's away right. That but every so if you're the if you're the if you're the, the first receiver, yeah. ball's coming from there, and I'm standing here. I'm giving you that space, and that's what's hurting us. We've got it. We just got to be square on him. There's also too many fucking people talking as well. Is there? Showing good signs, signs of improvement and from last year. I think they have a good chance. I think Scarlets are obviously up there with Leinster as one of the favourites for the competition, and uh, but still hopeful about today. Perfect conditions here. No wind, no rain. Just a mouth-watering game. Two teams who are going to want to play wide rugby. They're going to want to play high-paced rugby. Bondiaki again, he's the go-to man, and that's why Bondiaki going for it, offloads, and they're in through Tom Farrell. That's a wonder try. Good turnover by Cox, and O'Brien is driving on, and it's Adia Loken. Adia Loken for the second game in a row home, gets the try for Cox. And that's it, Cox get the win. It was a massive win. I think it was a massive crowd in the sports ground that day, and I think it was just it got the buzz going for the for the rest of the season. Make sure you enjoy these wins. We do, but we're also turning up here, ready to go on Monday. With the fucking Leicester in mind, we're going to take those boys on. Give it to them. really pleasing, the best performance we've had all year, 
um, and to you know to get a win against the Scarlets, especially at home, is, yeah. is uh, you've always got to be pleased with that. I suppose you kind of have to quickly put us to bed, but it was nice coming in on uh, coming in on Monday with a, a big win. So uh, no, it's good. We're kind of once Monday or Tuesday is finished, or once we come into Tuesday after Monday, we're we're kind of firmly parked. But it was good to kind of as a group to see the growth kind of week on week, and then to get a really important win against like a big team like Scarlet. So just about building out this week. For us, success would be you know to qualify for the, for the Champions Cup for next season. If you're there, you're playing against the better teams. You know you're you're probably able to recruit a lot more better players. If you're going to New Zealand or South Africa or Australia and trying to pick up the best talent, that you know the next Bundy Aki, if you're not in the, champ the, the top level Champions Cup and you're offering the same money as someone else, what's your point of difference? Most of those players, especially the Irish guys, they would have they would have grown up watching that competition. Uh, and they wouldn't have seen Connacht in it for a long time. And Connacht, Quinny, is where I want to begin this because uh, they're a pretty interesting story. I know you've been looking at it a little bit over the last few days. I think it's a new era now under, under, under Andy Friend and uh, so far so good. So I think we'll, 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 you know, we'll see where Connacht yeah. are tomorrow and, and can they withstand that challenge. And it'll be another part of their growth. This is kind of a step that you're playing the best club side in Europe, mm. coming to your patch. Can you back up? A really good result last week with a with a, a top class performance again. Here we got under a bit of daylight. Has he done so? He has. Brilliant from Ring Rose. And Ring Rose goes in beside the post. Leinster went down and gave them a reminder of what the European champions and what the gap between where Connacht are and, and the European champions is. So they built some momentum, but it wasn't the perfect start by any manner of means. But the, I think the signs were there that there was a, a chance to build. It was going great until October when uh, first European game I had just come on the pitch about two minutes and tried to tackle something pretty big. Uh, I went low and he kind of jumped and unfortunately dislocated my shoulder. For someone in my position, obviously Kieran Marmion is international so you target those windows, you're like brilliant, he'll be playing with Ireland so obviously everyone kind of moves up the, the ladder one rung and yeah I was just a bit eager and yeah I was in absolute agony. So today um, it's a down day for most of the lads but because I wasn't in on Monday, I'm catching up on Monday today um, so I have a single alarm upper session so I don't waste away completely. And then I have physio at, 12, uh, at 11, sorry, with Orla. So I'll be doing, she kind of does like hands on, like loosening out all around it and then have more rehab. Yeah, it's definitely a bit, a bit looser. Right? So this week now we'll set out his plan and return to play. So we can have goals that he's taken off each week that are progressing through to get him back into to training. So he's looking at about a 12 to 14 week recovery with this. So 12. He'll, he'll see me uh, four or five times a week. His initial four weeks are kind of getting the pain and inflammation to settle down, regaining his range and, and as I said, you're getting the muscles firing a little bit, but low level isometric stuff. I'm, I'm lucky that I work with such a, a, a great uh, group of management here that um, they all run their own show, so it's, it's, it's a brilliant uh, management to be a part of. Hi, I'm Martin Joyce, I'm the kit manager for Connacht Rugby. Normally you come in in the mornings, you just check with the coaches, see what they need, what the plan is for their session, what requirements they need for the pitch session and uh, just go about getting that sorted and getting all the equipment out for that. Some days are busier than others, depends. Defensive days are usually busier equipment wise. Academy training is up on the, the other pitch. Great to see the young lads doing work again. <laughs> Some of the medical lads have to wear blue bibs, anyone that needs no contact and stuff like that, so I just identify those. Yeah, away trips will depend on whether I fly or whether I drive. Nine times out of ten I'm driving, so I'd get the ferry. If it was a Friday night game, I'd get the ferry for Wednesday evening out of Ross Lair. Uh, arrive in on Thursday, the boys arrive in then after me, so everything is ready to rock when they arrive. A messy bunch, aren't they? And then they all come in and look, I left my top here, I left my top there, can't find this, can't find that. Not sure, like a mother son. Last one, show. Last 
Cheers for today, bud. No worries. Thanks, Rob. Cheers, oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Great. <laughs> That's my home from home. <laughs> I spent a few nights lying across the, the front seat of that, waiting to get on and off ferries. So, uh, yeah, I live in that sometimes. <laughs> About 11 a.m. for this type of, for a 5.30, 5.15 kickoff. But a lot of prep is done from the day before. It's just itchy feet, don't stay at home. So, for to be here and know everything's pushed so go from there. Desi! Desi! You finished? 90 seconds. Time, boys. Come on, boys. Huge game, boys. Let's look, fella. Enjoy yourself, fella. Have fun. Come on. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, lads. Yes! Well done, well done. See, Torsten's up playing the right areas of the field. Just that A, B, and C, yeah? We'll keep talking to you. That's fine. Quick, 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 quick. Time, boys, you have time, relax. Good carry. Yes! Well done, boys. That's great war, lads, that's great war. That's great stuff, boys. Stay at it now, stay at it. The addition of the South African teams was something that uh, initially took us a bit by surprise, but we love the experience. We love the experience now of going to South Africa. It's an opportunity for the, the group to spend really good quality time to challenge themselves. That South Africa trip was awesome, you know. It's, um, it's a big trip. You're away for, for a decent amount of time. I remember specifically in the meeting before we went to South Africa, Friendly challenged us and said, if we get two wins here, we're, we're nearly set up for the season and puts us in a brilliant place. One win and we're holding on and no wins and we're gone basically, is what he said. So we laid it a gauntlet, and I suppose we did live up to that in the end, but it was that big challenge before South Africa kind of put the pressure on us. One of our big things is we want to remove all excuses and um, you know, make sure that we have everything set and on point. So when these guys do get into it, they're only thinking about performance. They're not worried about anything else. You know, So from everything from travel packs that our nutritionist Laura put together to uh, supplements that the guys are taking to make sure they get a, a better sleep and, and getting on the time zone at the right time, that all helps us make sure that those things are no factor. So the kickoff will come from Jack Carton. Fly half of Connaught. Now out they come. They've got men wide. There's the little chip. A wise move that, and it's going to be an easy touchdown for Fian Keller. Late. Now they've got an extra man here. Can they use this? They will. Here comes the multiple drive scorer, Matty Lee. So one try to each of the two wingers. Judging by their social media, they had a great time, you know, the results were good, they got a lot of good work done on the training ground, it was just a, a nice way of breaking things up, but you know, December, you'd much rather spend December in Cape Town than you, you would in the, in the rain and wind in the west of Ireland, and it just seemed to bring them together while they were also putting points on the board, and gave them a bit of momentum once they touched down coming home, they kicked on from there, and it just, it's it's been... Um, I think when the story of Connacht's kind of season is written, it'll it'll be an important. Even though there were two games they'd expect to win against two teams that haven't gone well this season, I think the experience that they had over there is something that Andy Friend seems to have used really, really well in terms of building his team.
So, you know, for the patients, it's about somebody different coming in. I suppose what they really, really appreciate is somebody taking the time out of their busy lives. I mean, this is something, you know, somebody this age wouldn't normally do. Yeah, I don't know what it is. We just, we love anything to do with the hospice. Yeah. It just, yeah, I guess it makes you it makes you feel so much better knowing you knowing you make a difference to people's people's uh, people's lives in a way like we didn't realise the impact we had chatting to people uh, chatting to, to people who were in here until uh, was a Joanne told us one day she said geez that really made this person day or or, or this this lady feel so felt so happy after having chatted with us and we were like geez, we didn't realise we actually made an impact by chatting them just having they loved it and so. Knowing that they 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 get so much out of that, it's just it's enough for us to keep to, to keep visiting. So uplifting seeing people like people like her, uh, so full of life and you know being so positive despite the cards that the hand of life dealt at, at, for her. Like uh, in her in this situation, I think it's it's just it's amazing being able to ch chat to people that are that positive and they're that funny uh, despite what's happening and. You know, it's really uplifting for, for, for us just coming in and chatting with them. The sports ground has been home to Connacht Rugby since 1927. And as the team and the organisation grew, their stadium has remained a reminder of their history and their heritage. Going back in 2015-16, we started work on our vision and strategy, as I said to you earlier on, about providing that clarity of direction. So grassroots to green shirts was that vision and strategy. And, um, and in that we set out um, really what we we're trying to achieve overall. One of them was um, facilities that would match our ambition. Connacht Rugby announces their plans to redevelop the sports ground, a state-of-the-art stadium for a modern team. A good news story for Irish rugby. We have Willie Ruan, Connacht CEO on the line. Afternoon, Willie. Hey, Joe. How you doing? Great. So... 30 million euro development at the sports ground. Great news announced on Monday. Tell us all. Yeah, look, we were delighted to be able to announce the plans for the redevelopment of the sports ground um, into a proper fit for purpose modern sports stadium along with a new high performance centre. I would have played um, underage rugby for Buccaneers the whole way up and went to Maris and it would have been, this, before the clan was there, it would have been the three or four tiers of blocks. There'd be no roof on it and um, to see where it started then, then obviously to get the clan stand uh, when we started playing the Heineken Cup as it was and now to see kind of where it's going to be, it's uh, it's it's kind of humbling that you were involved in it at the time and kind of seeing the transition to where it has been and where it is today. I suppose as a province we're, we're all excited by the news of the new stadium and things like that and that, that's something that we're all... Um, you know, all behind and we all want to see happen. Hear people talking about it to me is, is amazing. You know, I never never ever thought I'd see the day that we'd be talking about a, a new stadium here and it's it is it's it's brilliant. You know, the fact that the Challenge Cup wasn't broadcast until the quarter final stage all season, um, you know, your sponsors want to be on TV. They want to have that broad um, broad appeal, you know, games in the Champions Cup which are going to massive audiences, like that's a great sell for sponsors. You know, you're trying to redevelop the sports ground and you're going to the government. I mean, the fact that you're in the top tier uh, competition in Europe and your stadium isn't up to, up to scratch yet, that's another stick that you can beat them with, that, you know, you can go and say, we need this because we're bringing the best teams in Europe here, the best, you know, the, the major broadcasters are coming here and, and we want to sell more tickets, but we also want to, you know, give the West of Ireland a greater audience. And it's a real uh, privilege for me to visit Connacht Rugby here today to uh, get a presentation on them uh, about the exciting plans they have to build uh, a new stadium here, new conference facilities uh, and new sporting facilities which will be of, of benefit to uh, the city of Galway but also to the entire uh, province of Connacht. Uh, so we have 100 million euros set aside in a fund for large-scale sporting uh, infrastructure. We'll be making those allocations uh, later this year um, and I'm very confident uh, that um, the Connacht Rugby Plan will be among the plans uh, that are funded out of that when we're able to make a decision. We've put a lot of investment in sporting facilities in other cities in recent years, uh, in Dublin, in Limerick uh, and in Cork, and I think it's long overdue that we have a similar investment uh, in this city uh, and for this province as well. Interprovincial matches come around twice a year. It gives players and coaches the chance to beat their nearest rivals and continue Connacht's good form. Yeah, the Interpros is just kind of, it's, it's a whole other ball game really. Um, you know, everyone kind of knows each other and, um, you know, very matey off the pitch, but 
you really want to do a job on each other on the pitch, you know what I mean? To come this week now and, and play away in Dublin, where against probably the best team in Europe, um, that's what we want to test ourselves against. And um, you know, we're under no illusions how tough it's going to be, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're in a good place and um, hopefully we can put in a good performance. They came to Dublin and played Leinster off the park. Ball in hand here for Cullen, the potential on the outside for Kelleher. Kelleher for the line, and in go Cullen, just five minutes on the watch. And Bangles here, blade through Carty, and he tries to chip one through. Oh, that's brilliant from the fly-off, and he's got in beside the post. Absolutely sensational from Jack Carty. And Car you see Carty, a player that we've all known, but and he knew he had huge potential and, and could shine in certain games, but to see him perform that well against such a strong Leinster team um, was just so unbelievably the impressive. He's got the pass inside and Connacht heads straight back. What a game Keelan Blade is having. I think we were the better team for 65 minutes and, and just let it slip. It was, it was a devastating way to end it. Range. Can he barrel over? Porter still going. Try! Leinster win it right at the death! But I think for all that it was heartbreaking for Connacht, it still infused them with huge belief that they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, a, with a, team, a team as strong as Leinster, away from home at a venue that they haven't won in a very, very long time. And not only compete, but play their own game and create things and you know wow the local crowd. You know They turned it into a positive experience, even though it wasn't a positive night. Following that narrow loss to Leinster, Connacht turned their attention to Ulster. Having beaten their northern rivals for the first time in 60 years earlier this season, they host Ulster at the sports ground. Questions down the blind side, little chip over the top. Goldwyn runs straight into Spain, but Cardi comes up with possession, blade in support, try for Connacht. <laughs> So after a strong performance against Ulster, Munster made the journey to the sports ground. Outside, Kerry! There we go, right there, give it go! Go! The ground, Fionga, big hand off. One there, a good footy start, okay? And that's probably the best we've played against this year, just from watching it. Uh, for us to get to that top where we want to be, get in that top three, get in the playoffs, we've got to learn from that, we've got to be better than that. Yeah, we're really gutted that, that, we, that we lost, but um, you know, we were beaten by a better team on the night and um, you know, get a losing bonus point out of it. Yeah, it's not what we wanted, but it's, at, at the same time, it's, uh, it's probably a fair reflection on the, on the game. Having beaten Ulster, which you know again they they don't they haven't done that regularly over the years. Munster sent down a strong team and won a, a very competitive game, um, having lost there the previous season. And although they came out of it with one win out of three, they performed strongly in all three games. You know, with the games and the, the the next block that we've got coming up, I think um, you know we've just just had a look at it there with the with the coaches and the really really important games. You know, the two games against Cardiff and. Um, <laughs> I think even we've got good good home games. We've got games that are winnable, games that you target. There's, it's just it's all all to play for, and and that's really because we've kept in touch and we're we're still in the in the in the hunt. And um, I think that's really important. And you know if we can get a couple of results, we get that momentum and you know take that forward. I think uh, it's what it's what we're really uh, really about at the moment. Yeah, it's been some tough footy, and we're we're hanging in there and we're fighting hard. So. Yeah, we welcome Sale next week. That's going to be another tough challenge for us. But I'm, I'm just really impressed the way these boys keep rising to the occasion. So Connacht then, I mean, Keith's alluded to it, Rory. They're in a much improved place. They've won four out of six in the Pro 14. 
could easily have been six out of six the way the Christmas period has yeah. gone for them. And I was looking, like this time last year, how miserable it was under Kieran Keane. They were out of playoff contention in the Pro 14. They're 12 points better off this season. Uh, first double over Ulster. And just the general mood down there is uh, far happier. So they're in a great place, really, by comparison with last year. Absolutely. And I think I don't have the table in front of me. I think it's five of their six defeats have been bonus point defeats. Right. So they're well in every game yeah, they're playing exactly. in, which even for putting bums on seats, is, it, you know you know you're getting a contest no matter what kind of mm. team show up. Mm. And I think they'd be kicking themselves that they, they weren't able to feel a little bit of a stronger team at the weekend because they were able to lift themselves above Munster and into second place behind the kind of a, an ailing Glasgow, you know, Glasgow have run into a few issues recently so they would have put themselves um, right in contention for topping the, the, the conference but they're still in contention to get to a, a playoff place yeah. but you know first time since 2016 they've kind of lost that momentum of that title win that season. One of the things we kind of bypass every now and then is rugby is about enjoyment not just for the fans but also for the players they haven't enjoyed losing those games yeah. but they are playing a style that I think most rugby players would say, God, I wouldn't mind having an all cut at that, you know. There's a bit of freedom to it, too. We're in Tune Rugby Club uh, doing a skill session. Um, the focus tonight was basically um, on goal kicking. We all came to the schools and the clubs, the club scene. I was very fortunate enough that there was people who took time out to help me along my journey. And it's nice that I can give something back to Tune Rugby Club or all these boys and girls of Connacht two or three boys or girls pick up a couple of nuggets they can practice and they go on to develop and play for their province or excel at their club or their school that's all that matters when i was growing up it, it there probably wasn't something like this and it would have been something that i would have chomped at the bit to, to it to have and it was such a great turnout i think 40 kids some from balana some from all, all every part of the every part of the province and it was just great to see such a such a cute crowd huge crowd here and it was really engaging and um, and it's great to see the kind of the, the talent that's kind of coming through the pipeline um, in the province. About two weeks ago, I started back doing skill sessions and started contact then at the start of last week, and then ramped it up to full enough bag hits on Thursday, and hopefully a bit of live stuff next week and a game in two weeks' time. Hopefully, if it works out, brilliant. If if it doesn't, yeah, I'll be disappointed, but I'd definitely be able to look back and say it wasn't because. I messed around in my final year here and went out midweek and didn't give it 100%. I think I'd be able to look back and say, I don't think I could have done anything more. And I was unlucky to get injured when I did, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. So when the Six Nations squad was named, um, there were a couple of injuries and it was no surprise that given the way they were playing, there was a couple of new Connacht faces in the squad. Caelan Blade came in, you know, got, got his chance because Conor Murray was injured. Um, I think he would have benefited hugely from the experience of being in those training sessions. And then Jack Carty is probably the biggest success story of all in terms of he comes in halfway through the Six Nations because Joey Carberry's done his hamstring, having been selected on merit ahead of Ross Byrne. And suddenly he's on the bench for Six Nations games. And not only is he just on the bench, he's coming on and affecting them positively. And he's, you know, he came on in that, that disastrous defeat to Wales and Cardiff and really improved matters for Ireland after replacing Johnny Sexton. You know, looked really confident, looked really at home. And he he walked away from that Six Nations as one of the f you know few Ireland players because it was a disappointing campaign with his reputation really really enhanced and it's a World Cup year those players will all be gunning for spots I'm I'm sure most of them will be involved in the pre World Cup camps and he's got a realistic shot of making it to the World Cup with key players out in Ireland duty Connacht suffer a heavy defeat at the hands of Glasgow yeah well uh, you can call it a void like obviously if you gut any team of a couple of their key leaders that's going to have an effect. Any sporting team, you take out their captain or you take out their couple of their best leaders and you, you, there's an obvious, obvious detrimental effect to performance. The game on the weekend, uh, coaches we will report over, we'll talk about in a minute, but that first 45 seconds, that's the game right there. The, the lack of detail, the lack of intent, um, basically just said to, to Glasgow for the next 79 minutes, just keep running at us because we're probably not here. Now that sometimes that happens, but we didn't change it. And we didn't seem to have the capacity to change it. So that's a disappointing thing. I suppose that really fired up our training for the next couple of weeks and we got a couple of good results after it. So um, hopefully now moving forward, it, do it doesn't take a bad result like that, but um, it definitely did with Glasgow. I think what it showed was that their strength and depth is not where it needs to be, particularly if they do go on from this point and qualified to fight in two fronts next season, I think they do need to strengthen it. I suppose a couple of years ago, maybe as a younger player, I would have been maybe 
you know, worried about uh, who's doing what and who's playing well in your position. Whereas now, I understand if Connacht want to get to where we're planning to get to as a team, we need to have loads of people, two or three deep in each position, playing really, really well. This week's match against Ospreys is do or die. A win puts Connacht securely into the conversation for knockout rugby and kills any hope for Ospreys. Good through the hands and suddenly the first break. Pete Robb. Can he get the ball? It's going to go all the way. What a start for Cullen. To Tom Farrell. Oh, and finds a little bit of a hole. What a first half he's had. What a what a first start in number 10 shirt. And it's away. There's a little bit of space for Cullen. Marmion again. He's going to get a second. He's not going to be caught from there. Kieran Marmion scores Connett's fifth. Following on from a strong win over Ospreys, Connacht turned their attention to Sale in the Challenge Cup quarter-final. Going over to, to Sale, it's a tough place. We've played there a few times. Um, I think they're, they're a massive, typical English team and they're with a massive physicality. Give us your prediction today, Skip. Uh, is it actually filming? Um, good solid win, mate. <laughs> Win by a point. <laughs> Win's a win, isn't it? That's all you need. What do you got for breakfast there, bud? Uh, just a solid breakfast, mate. That's a lot of bacon there. No, it's only a, only a piece. <laughs> and sausages. Where's the sausages? <laughs> Two blades. Two blades. Uh, <laughs> it's not mine. It's not mine, mate. It's not mine. One, it's, it's great to be here and knock out rugby. Um, it's where we want to be. It's uh, it's where we set out at the start of the season. Let's let's cut and try and compete, do the best that we can on both fronts. And uh, you know, when you look at the pool that we we got in this Challenge Cup, we had some pretty pretty tough teams in there: Bordeaux, Perpignan, and, and of course Sale. You know, I haven't played them. We've we've gotten to know a little bit more about them, and um, you know, obviously they're doing reasonably well in the Premiership now as well. So it's it should make for a very interesting fixture fixture this evening. We probably didn't turn up against Sale, um, and we didn't probably turn up in a couple of the games in the, the Pro or in the Challenge Cup. And it was, I don't know, looking back, maybe it been, maybe it could have been a thing where, you know, we were always looking a, a week forward. But um, yeah, we were disappointed with the, I suppose the level of performance we displayed against Sale because it was a big thing. Not to perform was was disappointing. So it doesn't matter what 23 you put out there, you expect them to perform. It's the, you know, it's a knockout game. Some of them were clearly playing for their futures and they just couldn't rise to the occasion. And that was a real disappointment. Um, it's happened once or twice this season, but really one of the things that Andy Friend has gotten out of this team and, and his coaching staff, Jimmy Duffy, and, and the rest of them has been a, a consistency of performance. That wasn't there that night. And, and they kind of found a little bit of something after half-time, but it was too little, far too little, far too late. Because Sale 
threw a couple of punches first half and scored a couple of impressive tries but as the game went on they looked increasingly human and I think the Connacht players kind of realised as it went on that really there was an opportunity there that they'd, they'd missed out on. We knew then once we were out of that that we had to concentrate on, on, on getting qualify, qualify for the Champions Cup the year after so it was all back to the, the Pro 14. And Good buddy. Good then. Well done. Good contest. Connacht have a pretty crucial game against Cardiff which will uh, decide much. So that's the important game of the weekend. Connacht uh, against Cardiff at the sports ground. Um, if they can win this weekend, they have a match to spare um, against Monster and Tongan Park next week. So it's a really, really big one. If they win this weekend, that's qualification for mm. Europe for them, which would be phenomenal for Connacht. And if we, uh, you know, when we thought that there was a shake-up in the Pro 14, the shake-up in the European competition, um, we would have always wished to try and get all our four teams into it. But in many respects, you're kind of wishing against reality. Yeah. But one big, one big game this weekend... And that reality could become um, uh, absolutely true. Connacht, with a win, can secure their place in the in the Pro 14 playoffs for the first time since that 2016 game, or sorry, 2016 championship win. And if they um, get there, no one's going to want to play them. So it's really, a, you know, it's a massive opportunity. They've kind of already hit bonus territory. Cardiff is the gateway to something that could be, you know, quite exciting for them. by Paul Boyle and he's made the break he's passed the first defender Blade nimble footwork and Caelan Blade is in try for Connacht there's Owen Lane first half try score spills in it's Healy Matt Healy in for Connacht the Blues have lost possession and that will also surely lose them the game it's all over Done well, we got one more to go, Munster. Uh, so we've got to make sure we turn up there, which we will. Um, we're bringing on fing off to King's Own. We got Kingstown, we got them. Um, so we're all looking forward to that. You put yourselves in that great position. Outstanding job to everybody. Let's enjoy tonight. We knew coming into the game we'd have to win, um, and the boys did it, but to win it with a bonus point is, is pretty special. Um, look, there's a couple of calls that could have gone either way. Um, but thankfully, we're on the right side of it today, which is, which is great. So, the feeling in that dressing room is, is pretty special. Personally, it felt like a weight off, off my shoulders. Um, the season wasn't over, but we knew that one of our goals from the start of the season we had achieved, and, and we achieved it at home in the style that we did with a huge crowd behind us um, was massive. It just shows it just shows how, m how much getting into that competition means for the players. It's the most high profile club competition in Northern Hemisphere rugby. Yeah, that Cardiff one I think was massive for everybody. It gave us an opportunity to to qualify for, for the Champions Cup, which was, you know, I think, in the back of everyone's head. I think everyone will be playing in that, in that European competition because you know, it's the best in Europe. Um, and then from a Pro 14 point of view as well, it kind of locked us into a really good spot there. We were actually being able to play uh, finals footy. If Connacht had failed to get into the, into the uh, Heineken Champions Cup for next season and maybe they had got to a semi-final or a final of the Challenge Cup, they probably wouldn't look back on this season as fondly as they will now. With Champions Cup rugby secured for next season, Connacht face Ulster in the Pro 14 quarter-final. Uh, we had a, so we had a day of the game uh, against the Ulster quarter-final. We just had a chat around our recruitment, uh, where things currently sit, and around some options of um, players that we'd like to go early on with recruitment. 
uh, for the next year coming, that knowing that they're under contract next year, but for the following year. Uh, and then also just looking at a whole recruitment um, and retention document and still trying to tidy that up and get some uh, nice ball, Davey, and get some um, real clarity around that. It could, could go anywhere, this. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went for about 40 minutes and gave us a good bit of, bit of clarity around the key areas that we're looking for. We said at the front end of this week, these weeks are about enjoying yourself, okay? And I felt that the mood through the, the course of the week has been really good. It's good for a few reasons, so number one, this is our 10th month together. The 4th of July since we started, and now the 4th of May. 10 months, 42 weeks we've been together. Understanding what it is we're trying to do, working hard to get where we've got to, and here we are. This is why you actually do it. Our theme of the week is composure. This is the other reason I feel like we're in a good headspace there at the minute. Because you know what you've got to do. You've done it. And today there's going to be moments in that game there where it's going to feel really awkward. This is our time. Let's go. Come on, boys. 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 Let's go, one day. Let's go. Cooney for Billy Burns. Marcel Kutsi here with the offload for Treadwell. He's got man outside the Timothy. I warn you about the seventh pick. And Timothy demonstrates it there. Do not worry about what might happen. Do not worry about what could happen. Go and get them. <coughs> Do not die wondering about what moves they can practice all week. Go and get them. Everything we do second half, everything we do is on the front foot in defence. Back row, McKillen and Butler. Birds are intercept from Fienga. Fienga's away. Where's the support? It's Bundyeke. His old ready score tries against Ulster in his last three appearances. And through Bundyeke, Connett switch on the green light. Timoney could see it. Could see it. That, that evening and the next few days, we, the lads kind of reflected on, on the season and I suppose Frindy coming in for his first season and to get a quarter-final of a Challenge Cup and a quarter-final of a Pro 14, our ambitions are, are higher, but uh, to, to be that for, for year one is, is a massive thing to build on and build on for next season. Was it a positive season? When you look at Connex hist historically, yes, absolutely. It's probably our second best season ever. Um, but as a squad, if you talk to them now, were we disappointed with losing in the quarter-final? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
did we think we uh, represented ourselves as well as we could and it probably not um, which which leads to disappointment um, so yeah I think there's great aspirations within the squad to go on and do much better uh, in the near future well, I suppose our season from a team point of view is we got Champions Cup rugby which is one of our goals um, so we'd have to be delighted with that and hopefully push on for next season um, but saying that we got to a quarter final and lost it in the Pro 14 and in the, in the Challenge Cup so no silverware or, or no semi-final or final, it's quarter-finals early to go out, so again, we set foundations I think this year, but look, look to push on now next year and hopefully get semi-final, final, final time and do well in the Champions Cup. Yeah, look, I mean, it's interesting, someone said to me recently, it's, it's, it's possibly been the most successful year ever because it's been across the full breadth. You know, when we won the Pro 12 in 15-16, it was brilliant to win the Pro 12, but this year we've achieved our greatest ever, ever commercial performance. We've achieved grassroots in terms of um, playing numbers, the growth in the number of teams playing, the number of schools playing, the number of uh, young girls playing, the number of young boys playing. Our best numbers ever, um, you know, in terms of the stadium development, in terms of where we've got to with our governance. So across the whole organisation, it's been a very, very um, successful year and uh, one that we, you know, we take a lot of satisfaction from. That's not to say that we don't have an ambition to go and win the Pro 14. Absolutely we do. If we're in the top six, we're in the playoffs. If we're in the playoffs, all bets are off. 